the top 10 food and beverage ingredient companies are all making various investments. Uh, this is in the global uh, group, the global market. They're all making various investments in health and wellness. DSM, for example, completely reorganized its dairy uh, division to focus on health and wellness. And this was just in July of 2006. Ajinomoto is coming up with health drink so that you don't associate Ajinomoto purely with MSG. So that's probably a very good idea for them. And Archer Daniels Midland is not only producing more and more uh, food uh, in Greek food and beverage ingredients, they're also venturing into biofuels, which I will talk about later. In terms of what ingredients are being used now, and this, this is not an exhaustive list because this will go on and on. And you'll see some of these supplements in the stores. You see whey protein, and if you start going to the gym or buy, uh, let's say, from Fruits Magic, you can have a shot of whey added to your drink. Omega-3-6, which is uh, from fish oil, which you might think if you have very dry skin. Uh, antioxidants, which you'll see, uh, which is an anti-cancer uh, additive. It's also, it's also a supplement you can take. You know, um, also, the, the teas now, like uh, One Tea and C1, they, they uh, advertise that they have antioxidants in their beverages. Coca-Cola is particularly um, affected by this trend because they used, for every five bottles of Coke that they used to sell, they now only sell three. Because two, two of those bottles are now being exchanged for um, health and wellness drinks. So they're, they're feeling the crunch from the health and wellness trend. If you look at what is um, the current market value versus the potential market value. You can actually classify the ingredients into mature, established, market opportunity, and niche. So we'd be looking uh, on the lower quadrant, we'd be looking to get into the market opportunity or niche places for our Ampalaya and Sampong uh, supplements and natural ingredients. But right now, CoQ10 is very big. I'm sure if you watch CSI, you'll eventually see a commercial on AXN uh, from Nivea, which is advertising they're looking young, use Nivea to look younger because it has CoQ10. Uh, they mention it in the commercial. And uh, there are a lot, there, the, the niche markets like Pine Bark and Black Co Wash, this is only found, I would say, in supplement stores, specialty stores like Healthy Options. In terms of cosmeceuticals, the ingredients that are in demand right now are, of course, the vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin C compounds. Uh, Unilab actually has Myra E, which is a cosmeceutical uh, featuring vitamin E. I already mentioned coenzyme Q10. Sunscreens have organic and inorganic chemicals, zinc oxide, and I think and titanium are also in sunscreens. Acids, you always see alpha hydroxy acid is a part of your cosmetics. Enzymes again are starring here because of Botox. I'm pretty sure we can find another replacement for Botox in this country if we look hard enough. And that's a that's a billion dollar market, I can tell you. Proteins such as collagen, amino acids, and elastin are also popular. Rustans is selling, um, for example, a collagen lip plumper for 500 pesos. Of course, I could say that you should inject collagen and not put it on your lips, but not everyone is a scientist. But at least now you know not to buy the 500 peso collagen lip plumper. Um, botanicals, which is another name for all these herbal supplements and things that we sell in front of the Quiapo Church, uh, are also rising. In fact, there has been a surge in the US patent database on patents on botanicals specifically because they are now changing their rules in the Food and Drug Administration of the U.S. to accommodate the health and wellness trend. So once they got the rules sorted out, uh, they, they now have uh, a set of standards to judge botanicals. So I, I would hope that the uh, OSP, now that it's coming up with uh, a framework for patenting things, we should also start to patent some Boeing Banaba before someone else does. If you look at firms with cosmeceutical products, and the ladies in the audience will be very interested in this, because at least you will know that the exorbitant price you are paying for your cosmetics is actually worth it because there's something 
in there. Uh, Shiseido, for example, and Estilo there have been capitalizing on the trend in Chinese traditional medicine. They put up research centers there in 2002. Uh, Shiseido put one up in Beijing. And recently, last year in 2006, uh, Estilo there put up one in Shanghai. Shiseido now has 24 cosmetics from, the C from Chinese traditional medicine, which they've been marketing since 2004. Um, on, after only almost one year, Estilo there also has two products. One in their origin line, which is the Plantidote um, Mega Mushroom Face Serum, and the Renutriv Ultimate Lifting Serum. And uh, uh, I, 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 wouldn't, I could not say to the actual uh, effectiveness of these uh, products, and I'm only mentioning them because they're capitalizing on Chinese traditional medicine. But if, we, if they can sell these things from CPM, trust me, we can find something that the ITAS have been using for years and also package it that way. Um, the global market forecast, on the other hand, for essential oils, which is also used in the food industry and cosmetics. The top four oils that they demand are Tavana oil, which is from Artemisia, patchouli oil, lemongrass oil, and jasmine oil. You might recognize the last three because they're usually in aromatherapy. Um, practice if you get a massage here in Makati at one of the spas. And you're going to see the essential oils market growing faster than the aroma chemicals, uh, which is, yeah, you're going to see it cap out at about 5 billion, sorry, 5 million in 2011. And as I mentioned before, you're also going to see a corresponding growth in feed and feed additives due to the wellness value chain. So you want everything to be organic and for something to be labeled organic it has to be uh, the fertilizers and feeds and all the other inputs have to contain less than a certain amount of chemicals for it to be certified organic. So we're going to be looking at a need for biopesticides and herbicides because we already have biofertilizers uh, and we're going to be looking at more feed additives especially because um, quite recently the Department of Finance uh, rejected the request of the Department of Agriculture to uh, have a tax holiday for soybean meal, which is a very important feed additive for our backyard piggery uh, industry. And that's the Department of Finance rejected it because they're going to lose about 5 to 8 billion pesos every year if they get that tax holiday. So if there is a replacement for soybean meal, it's a simple import substitution it, it would be very good for the Philippines. 